If you've followed me on YouTube or Twitch for a while, you'll know that I love the Splatoon games. I've been playing since the day the original was released, which wasn't a super long time ago, but five years was like... five whole years ago. The point is, I've played a lot. Just look at how many hours I have. Look at my rankings. I don't know whether to be proud or disappointed in myself, but for today I'll be proud. Because you're not here to listen to me talk about my Switch hours. You're watching this video to learn some tips for ranked mode. I'm sure you're wondering why I'm making a tips and tricks video three and a half years after the game originally released. Well, I just feel like helping some of you out with my own strategies. Whether you're new to the game or you just want to get a little bit better, I'll make sure to give you the push you need to rise up in the ranks. Alright, let's start off with Splat Zones. I think this might be my personal favorite mode. The way Splat Zones works is like this. There's either one big zone or two little zones that you need to cover with ink. Once you cover it in your team's color completely, a countdown starts. Once that countdown gets to zero, you win! It sounds simple, but it can get overwhelming very quickly. If you want to play a supporting role on your team, I recommend using a longer ranged weapon to ink the zone from far away and to keep a general eye on the enemy team. That way you won't need to worry about anyone sneaking up behind you and BAM! Splatted. The Splattershot Pro and Squelcher seem to work for me. They have a pretty long range, they ink pretty well, and my aim with a charger is practically non-existent. If shorter ranged weapons are more your thing, then that's perfect too! You just need to make sure that you rush into zones when the coast is clear. If you end up getting splatted because of carelessness, then your team will fall behind in an instant. And trust me, after almost a thousand hours in this game, I have some experience with that. Short range weapons that I'd recommend are the splash matic for its fast firing rate and pinpoint accuracy, and the splat dually so you can evade with a dodge roll if things get out of hand. But what about the aerospray gold? That can ink really quickly. Well, you're not wrong, but as you get into higher ranks, the players you fight start to get aggressive. Because of the aerospray's crazy accuracy, or lack thereof, you'll most likely get splatted while trying to defend yourself. So no, I would not recommend relying on it, but if you do, just keep that in mind. As for specials and sub-weapons, I feel like Booyah Bombs and Burst Bombs work greatly. Booyah Bombs are easy to use. Just spam down on the d-pad for a few seconds and then yeah! right in the middle of a zone. I promise it'll stop the opposing team's countdown every time. Burst Bombs work pretty much the same way as Booyah Bombs, except they're pocket-sized. They don't use up a lot of ink, and if you're worried about ink usage, just use some sub-saver up. I use it all the time and I love it. Here's my personal strategy for Splat Zones. I use the gold dynamo roller when I play, only because it's golden and I need to stay on brand. No, I'm just joking. That's only one of the reasons why I use it. Its range is deadly for a roller and it's really good at spreading ink. I mostly use the horizontal flick because I feel like it's a lot more effective than rolling it around or flicking it vertically. I try to stay above the zones if I can or behind cover if I don't have a height advantage. I always use the abilities Ink Saver Main and Ink Recovery up because the ink gets drained extremely quickly when you fling that thing a million times a second. Once I run out of ink, I use my Ink Armor Special to quickly regain it in full. That way I can stay on the offensive and scare out the other team. I could use the Kensa Dynamo Roller for the Booyah Bomb instead, but I gotta stand on brand ahead! <laughs> tower Control! Oh, Tower Control, how I love you with all my heart and hate you with every fiber of my being! This mode is pretty self-explanatory. You need to control the tower. The tower moves when someone is on it, and you need to get to the opponent's side to win. The tower moves faster if multiple people are on it at a time, but please, and I can't stress this enough, PLEASE only keep one person on a tower at a time. All it takes is for one lunar blaster lunatic to come around, shoot, and destroy everyone on the tower at once. So first and foremost, let one or two people deal with the tower while everyone else takes care of the other team. As for weapons this time, blasters and long range weapons are key. Most blasters have a short range and a slow fire rate, excluding rapid blasters, but their damage and blast radius is insane. If you hit someone point blank with one of these things, well, don't take my word for it. Just check this out. <laughs> you hear that little click? I live for that click. Instant splat. And if you miss, the blast radius will get him instead. It just takes a few extra shots. If you rush up to the tower and then shoot a few shots with a blaster, boom. Everyone is either dead or they're fleeing for their lives. It's awesome! Don't like getting all close and personal to the tower? Well, I've got a perfect suggestion for you. You need range! Any kind of range! Chargers, splatlings, you name it and it'll probably work for you. The tower isn't very big, so if you shoot it with a fully charged shot with an E-leader, there's a good chance you'll hit someone hiding on it. 
And if you don't, you'll probably cover up the ink that they're hiding in so you can easily bop them off then. And with a long ranged weapon, you can scope out the enemy team and also scare them a little bit. Whenever I see an E-Leader in a lobby, I panic. Yep, I... Those things... <laughs> they're pretty scary. For tower control, you'll mostly be focusing on the tower itself, so a good special to use is the Stingray. If you shoot it directly at the tower, no one will try to get on because they'll just get splatted. For a sub weapon, ink mines used to be perfect in the first game. They would explode and splat people in one hit. In Splatoon 2, they don't do as much damage, but they do activate point sensors upon detonation. Point sensors reveal the location of enemy players to your entire team. I feel like they're really underrated, but uh, I love them. Take point sensors and pair them with bombs, place one on a tower, and when someone decides to ride it, they'll get damaged and their location will be revealed and they'll run away. Probably. Now for my strategy, also known as the perfect strategy, <laughs> or more commonly known as the cheap strategy, the Clash Blaster! The Clash Blaster is a blaster that takes away the slowness of a normal blaster and amplifies its fire rate by around 500 million billion thousand and a half in exchange for its damage. Basically the damage it does isn't the best, but it makes up for the speed it has. All you gotta do is aim and fire and then you make a profit. It's really easy to use and extremely satisfying when you get a bunch of consistent direct hits. Oh, that's the stuff! When you hear the word Rainmaker, you probably think of making it rain. Or you might think of literal rain. But no, the Rainmaker is a kind of weapon. No, not that kind of weapon! Even though the Ink Storm is a literal Rainmaker. Like, what? What were you thinking, Nintendo? Its rain is referring to its hellfire that you will rain upon your enemies. Yeah, this thing is powerful. I guess you could call it the Painmaker instead, eh? No? All right then, you would assume that you'd be able to blast through enemies like Link does in Age of Calamity, but nope, you gotta charge it up for it to be effective. This mode is kind of like a capture the flag type mode, except there's only one flag, and you need to take it to your opponent's side. You need to break the barrier, grab the Rainmaker, and then get to the podium near the enemy spawn point. Sounds easy, but if you can't manage to make a clear path to the goal, you'll never be able to win. If you're the one with the Rainmaker, my advice is to take it slow. Don't just rush into situations where you don't know the outcome. If you blindly run into an open space without knowing who's there, you might as well call it a day, because you're already in the process of respawning. Make sure you advance only when you know you can. If you look at the top of the screen, you can see what players have been splatted and who's still around. If you notice that everyone is on the map, then you should slow down and take a breather. And when you see someone running at you, simply destroy them! Once you see that two or three of them are out, then you should advance a little bit. As far as weapons go, I'm not sure that there is a best one to use. It really depends on what you're most comfortable with. Some people say rollers, others say sloshers. It really does depend on your playstyle. Subs and specials are the same, really. All types of bombs explode automatically on the Rainmaker's barrier, so anything could work that way. Burst bombs can give you a little pool of ink to hide in if you need it. Curling bombs can make a perfect straight line for you to rush into the fight. Auto bombs can sneak behind players. There's a bunch of things you can do. The same is true with specials. Any could work, it just depends on how you want to play. Although, here's a fun useless fact. Tenta missiles can actually lock onto the Rainmaker's barrier. I don't know if that would really be useful for anything, but it's cool to know, I guess. The way I play is by using a little bit of range. I use a Splattershot Pro to give myself a bit of an advantage from far away. The point sensors are extremely helpful when you tag someone with one. And if you use Subsaver, you can keep throwing them constantly. Knowing where everyone is is even more useful than it sounds. The person with the Rainmaker can bombard anyone that's been tagged because, well, you know, they know where they are. When I have the Rainmaker, I play it safe and support everyone else on my team. So what you want to do for Rainmaker is this. Trust your teammates. <sighs> Clam Blitz. This mode might be the reason why many of you are watching this video. Honestly, I don't blame you. This mode can be extremely frustrating early on, and even in higher ranks too. I think it's because people don't understand how Clam Blitz works, or they just don't like to communicate. Clam Blitz works like this. All around the map, there are clams. On both teams' sides is a basket. What you need to do is collect as many clams as you can. Once you have 10 clams, you get a power clam. When you throw the power clam at the basket, the barrier gets destroyed and you can freely throw other clams in until the barrier comes back up. It does sound confusing in theory, but when you actually play, it's a lot easier. Before I continue talking about strategies, I just want to mention that this mode wasn't originally in the game. It was added in a holiday update in 2017. Gee, what a perfect Christmas gift, Nintendo!
Part of the reason why Clan Blitz is so annoying for so many people is because teams can't communicate very well with each other. There isn't any voice chat, unless you count the phone app. Who am I kidding? Nobody cares about the phone app. The only way to communicate is by saying either to me or booya, and nobody cares if you yell to me. So here's a tip for everyone. When someone yells to me, check where they are on the map. They could be waiting under the net for someone with a power clan. If so, you get some easy points if you just jump to them and throw it in. I just like to note how in this clip I try to do just that but fail miserably. So, uh, you know, <laughs> sorry. I mean, you get the idea, right? It's not that hard to comprehend. <laughs> yep, I'm an X rank. Of course, this only works well if everyone knows what you're trying to plan. So let's just scrap that for now. To get clams, you need to be fast. The quickest weapons are the ink brush and the octo brush. The ink brush is a bit faster, but the octo brush does a little bit more damage. With these weapons, you can swiftly rush in, grab clams, and rush away. Ink Saver Main is good for this strategy because you won't need to stop and recover ink as much. However you decide to collect your clams, you still need to actually get them to the basket. Brute forcing your way over won't work all the time because when you have a power clam, everyone will be able to see it on the map. When you're taking one over to the net, try to go with one or two other people while someone stays back and looks over everything. If the other team tries to make a move at the same time, someone will be there to try and stop it. But once again, that's hard to work out with your team when you can't communicate GOD NINTENDO! Look, this'll definitely work if you're on a Discord call with your friends, but for a public ranked lobby, uh, maybe... Once you get into higher ranks, people will start to understand how the game works, so it's not as aggravating to play. When I play an X rank, I use the standard ink brush with ink saver main and quick super jump. I run around the map and pick up clams and then quickly jump to another player for safety if things go a bit crazy. Something important that I should mention with super jumping is that jumping to your spawn when you have clams destroys the clams, so don't do that. If I notice someone that has more clams than me, I toss some of mine over to them. The more power clams on the field, the better. I always look at my map to see if anyone's near the basket and then I jump if it seems safe. And when I look at the map, I also make sure to note if there's any power clams on the other team that I should worry about. So basically, all I can say about clam blitz is to keep an eye on your surroundings as much as you can. Sometimes you'll need to carry your team on your back, but I believe in you. If I can get to X rank, then you can do anything. I think that's all I can tell you for now. Actually, there's one more thing I can tell you. You won't be amazing at the game immediately. It takes a lot of patience to succeed at something. You can't ride a bike without falling a few times. And you can't start playing piano without hitting the wrong keys every once in a while. That's just how life is. So don't get angry when you lose a game and don't slam your head into your desk when you rank down. Take it easy and you'll get insanely better. I hope you try some of these tips that I shared and I really hope they work for you. This is the first time I've ever made a video like this so if you liked it or found it helpful, make sure to give it a like. And share it around to your teammates that could use a little work on their ranked mode playing. <laughs> And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitch where I stream Splatoon 2 and a bunch of other games. Then you can watch some of my strategies in action. Sometimes messing up, but usually they work out pretty well. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching and I hope I see you in another video. See ya!